Good morning, everybody. You are tuned to Computers 2K now on the Nissan Communications Network. I'm Anman, your host for the next couple of hours, along with Nick. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. And Gal is here. Good morning. Good morning. Our number is 919-518-9773, Computers 2K Voice on Skype. And today's show is made possible by vMix Software and is sponsored by Tom Sinclair of Live Streaming Gear. Man, it's cold. I oh, know. Very Damn. cold. It's ridiculous. But it's better than nothing, I guess. So we are an hour. We lost, we lost an hour. Which means what? It's going to be light at the dark at the. No, it's going to be gonna light. Be, light. It's going to be darker in the morning. Yeah, which sucks. For uh, wait me. a second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. In it the will. But it's going to be. Blows. Yeah, for you, at six o'clock in the morning now. It's yeah, but be. that's like for what? Two weeks and yeah, that's it. Right. And it's, it's going to light up. Yeah. yeah. But it's going to be. The day is going to be longer. So it's going to be. That doesn't do me any good. I'm in bed. <laughs> I preferred it the other way. I loved when I could walk outside the studio at six fifteen, and it was you know the sunrise, the sun yeah. was starting to peek over. But such is life. Yep, that's all right. It's fine. I wonder when they're going to change that. I mean, every time this happens, you ah, see a yeah, lot. This of... has been talked about for years. I know they're it's now. not going to be changed. Well, I mean, some states changed it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Arizona, so... Nevada. Couple states, right? You know, it's it's uh it's possible. And and those states that changed, you see there is an entire debate there every year that they need to bring it back. So uh -huh. it's not the the pros and cons are on both ends. It's not like all pros, all cons. So well, I don't I don't read the stuff about them wanting to bring it back. So I mean, yeah, you're reading more than I do, so it, it's no. Yeah. It's, uh, last year, when we or when we uh, now we sprung forward, when we fall yeah. back, yeah, when we I, fell I read back. about it a bit more, and it was uh, I saw that in the states that it was uh, changed. Then and and there's uh, other places in the world where the, the change was made, and so half of the population is. You know, for it, half of the population is <laughs> against it. It's like it does. A, it's a, it's a liberals uh, versus conservatives all over again. <laughs> it's like you can't lose. Oh, so Alan says not much darker because of the equinox occurring in just one week. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. In interesting. Um. Okay. So. Woke up to some Google Fiber problems this morning. I thought I fixed it, but not, not that I fixed it. I thought it was no problem in it. Yep, it's not. Okay, so I have a suggestion. I think it's down because Facebook is down now for me because I'm okay. using. So the suggestion I have is what happened to me yesterday. I woke up yesterday to Google Fiber issues. First time in my entire subscription with them. Uh, and we, uh, we talked with the family over video in Israel mm -hmm. and they kept complaining that they, we, we saw them fine and heard them fine, but they complained that they, that we were uh, blurry 
What's going on? Ending the call, I go, I do a speed test, and I see I have less than uh, eight megabytes upload. This Sheesh. is a 500 uh, megabyte connection, right? Uh, symmetrical. So, okay, that's weird. I, I, I don't use uh, Google's equipment, so I thought I, need, I know that if I'm going to talk with them, right, I probably need to prove that things are not working on their end. Uh, so I do the Google, um, Google fiber speed test. Um, and then I open a chat with them, which was a very pleasant experience. First of all, their chat, you can send screenshots and stuff like that with a copy paste. So that's very easy. Um, you know, uh, they asked me, did you restart your routers and all the usual questions? And obviously I did. And, and that was easy. Um, <clears throat> And when they saw that it wasn't my equipment, right? When I was able to show that everything is happening with and without the equipment. And actually, I, I just mentioned I'm using my own equipment. I completely restarted it, right? Didn't need to go like through hoops. And she scheduled a technician for the same day at 5 p.m. Wow. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, great. This was, I don't know, 10 a.m., 11 probably. And, uh, and about two hours later, around uh, j just shy of uh, 1 p.m., I get a phone call. Uh, and it's the Google Fiber technician, and he's calling ahead of time um, to see if there's something he can do on his end. And, uh, and sure enough, about 15, he, first of all, he wanted to, you know, make sure that somebody is home because if he's going to do something, you need somebody to test on, on my end. Uh, and he said, I'll call in about 10, 15 minutes after I try something. And, um, and he asked questions about my network and stuff, uh, because he couldn't see the router, right? Um, my, uh, my account was still marked as uh, using their, their router, um, even though I'm using my own equipment. So um, I explained that I'm using my own equipment, told him what type of equipment and stuff like that, and said, okay, call, me, call you back in 10, 15 minutes. Calls back in 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I needed to restart my stuff just because... Um, Actually, I had to do one thing. I, I, uh, when you're using Google's equipment, the incoming Ethernet traffic coming from the fiber jack is tagged with VLAN 2. And uh, needed to remove, the, um, remove that because when they switch, so what he did, he, sw he switched me from the use the Google equipment plan to use your own equipment plan, which they introduced about, I don't know, a year ago. I remember seeing that when you were connecting for the first time. And uh, once uh, I switched that off, uh, I removed the VLAN tagging from, uh, from the incoming connection, restarted uh, the, the connection, and bam, I got internet back doing a speed test. Everything's back to normal. That was painless. Completely painless. Didn't need to beg. Didn't need to convince anybody that the problem is, uh, is definitely not on my end. Talked with very intelligent people, very patient people. Uh, it was a pleasant, pleasant experience. I can't say this is the first time I can say there was a pleasant experience with an internet uh, malfunction that uh that i wasn't pissed off on so um, mm -hmm. yeah it was it was nice and it's nice talking about it here because you know kudos for them they, they, they it went well very nice so my suggestion to you because we know that there's the option on the website to switch the uh, the subscription type Maybe that's what you need to do on your own that might solve everything. Because when, when that switch is done, 
it basically reprovisions your connection through their uh, quality of service servers or something like that. Um, uh, it reassigns the, the prod program right to your line. So it might, it might be beneficial for you to try it before you even talk with them. Well, something to try. Maybe I should, yeah. But um, um, uh, while you were talking about this, I went and tried, and and it's it's kind of half ass right because I can connect. Oh, I cannot connect. No, ah, never mind. It's it's weird because on I I do get the video on Facebook. So maybe maybe it's just an IP address change. The outgoing connection is working. Um, actually, at this point, it's frozen. Uh, whoops! Yep, and, there and, it is. I was gonna. I was gonna. Problem, I was gonna ask Nick if oh. why how come Vmix still showing me that I'm connected to Facebook, but it just popped up. Could not find stream. Click Facebook setting mm -hmm. above to create a new one. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's screwing up. So it wait. could be it's just like me. It's maybe just the upload that's fucked up. Um, could be. Yeah, you need to run a speed test. Yeah, but I know that you're on the use my own equipment program. So. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's. Um, I, I'm sure it'll come back. I mean, with all the construction here, I don't know. I mean, I'll I'll give him a call later. It's no big deal. Everybody's getting it through the AT and T. I don't want to change the IP address here now because it'll. Yeah. I'm afraid it'll mess things up. So never mind. So no Facebook. Well, it's very interesting, Gal, that you had that experience <clears throat> because that was completely the polar opposite of what i had with at&t probably at this point probably close to a year ago <laughs> and it was and i and I, I assume what it comes down to is um uh what's the word i'm looking for um encouraging your employees to actually solve the problem and giving them the power and giving them the decision making ability to actually solve a problem instead of following a script or a book mm -hmm. if i had to yeah. guess that's what I would assume is the difference between Google and AT&T is the Google people are given the uh, opportunity to solve those problems themselves, while AT&T is just told to replace the equipment and call it a day, which obviously does not work and did not work in my case. So that could be, could be. I mean, or you're just talking to idiots that don't know what they're doing, which I think was, was also my problem with AT&T. I could never get to, I could never get anybody on the phone that was an actual technician. It was just the support staff. And I don't expect this, uh, the support staff to understand what a trace route is and why I'm dropping packets, but they would just would refuse to give me to anybody that I could talk to. It was very frustrating. Yeah. I mean, you want some, yeah. some at least basic stuff. Yeah. And that, yeah, and, and, and they, they, they did the basic stuff and the basic stuff was fine. But when I got to, okay, the reason you're not seeing the problem is because the speeds are fine. I'm not having a speed problem. I'm having a, a, a connectivity problem. Mm -hmm. My packet loss is 40%. And you're not going to see that on a speed test. Yeah. You're, 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 you're losing your pockets. Yeah. My <laughs> pockets are just flying. I mean, I got holes in them. They're just flying right out of the flying out of everything. I, uh, you know why? It's because uh, you lost the token from the token ring network. Um, <laughs> you need to buy some more uh, tokens. Yeah, but to 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 what be is this? Fair, a stupid arcade? I need more to more more stupid gold tokens to play ski ball. Oh, or something, you something. have no idea. This is way before my time, so it's way before your time as well. Um, but to be fair, when what you're saying is probably true. I I must say I don't think the person that I chatted with right was in any way a network person or they they did some very basic checks on their end something that they probably have and I mean what the technician did was something that I could even do so 
it did need to move to the technician, but the transition to the technician wasn't painful. It was same day, right? That was what um, um, was really nice about this. Now, this, was, this is Saturday, right? This is not even a, a, a regular weekday. And I, and I got all of that response quickly. And that's what, uh, what was really nice about the entire process. So that, I mean, that's, and, much, and that's much I can say. And, and it's really well, nice. That was, Go ahead. No, and that was exactly my problem is when I called at and or to get them out here, they're like, oh, it'll be uh, seven business, seven days before yeah, we can exactly. get somebody out there. And it was like, well, what the hell? This isn't useful at all. I just need to talk. I don't need somebody to come out here. I don't have a problem. I had already replaced my modem twice. I didn't have yeah. an equipment problem. I just, you know what I needed? I needed a new freaking IP address and they wouldn't give me one. That's exactly right. what that's the what it was. was. Yeah. And I was willing to pay. I was like, just I'll pay for five static IPs if I can keep the service. Oh, sorry, that's unavailable on your account. I was like, fuck, what do you mean it's unavailable? I just need a new IP address. Yeah. That was what it all came down to. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, I, yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I'm glad that at least one ISP Spectrum is Spectrum isn't at, Spectrum isn't terrible either. I've had some not here, but in the past, especially with you know radio work when I was doing the, the some of the work on the radio station Spectrum was our primary, and the Spectrum people their support was 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 always good. I, if I needed to talk to somebody about a technical but, issue, I was able to get to somebody. But that was a business account. It was a business account. Yes, I will agree. Um, but the first level of support was always pretty much the same, which was, you know, just a regular support call. Is your service up or down? And, and, and I don't even think there wasn't even a special business number you called. It was the same number. And then you, yes, it was a business. I will give you that. It was a business account. Um, yeah. So I, I remember the same experience from uh, the office where, where we worked. The first time we were a small office, but it was a business account. And I compared the service that the, the office got. And I remember the guy coming in and installing everything because we were, we were here on ground zero of the office, right? Uh, and, um, uh, and, uh, and I remember being really surprised, right? These are proficient people, uh, like serious. They're, they're to the point. They're not like, you know the unionized electrician that only wants to do one thing at one time, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and, and, uh, and then, uh, uh, the, the office manager says me, yeah, yeah, but <laughs> this isn't the spectrum you're getting at home because it's, <laughs> it's business. Uh, so, it's the same. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, I was, I, I, I followed your suggestion. Island, I did a. I'm doing a speed test. Uh huh. Down is 40, up is 52. What? <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's different. I I got the. Uh, I I don't think I got a 400 when I did the the download test, but I got like 300 or 200. It was like yeah. way beyond the 100, but the download was like eight. So the upload, you mean? The upload was eight. The upload, sorry. Yeah. yeah. The weird thing, though, is, again, I'm I monitor uh, the show. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm on the computer stuck right now page, and it never disconnected. It never paused the video. Yet I I when I'm on a terminal, it is on and off and on and off, but. The video on the page is looks solid, both from Twitch and from YouTube. Ah, anyway, it'll be interesting to see what happens if I click stream now over here. It won't even, nah. Oh, yeah, it's streaming. Let's see if it'll stay, I mean, to YouTube, to Facebook. But it's probably changed the. It probably changed the the uh, stream number, so it's not going to work on on Facebook. Yeah. 
Anyway. All right. So what else has been happening? Again, this week has been kind of dominated by uh, Ukraine stuff. I've got an interesting story that's kind of relevant around that. And I had a technical issue that Gal helped me out with, and I want to talk about that okay. too. But go. So duck duck go. Oh and yeah. This is gonna be this this is gonna be an interesting this is gonna be an interesting debate. So duck duck go has oh um give me a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Go you go ahead. Go ahead. Anyway, um Oh, and Gal, mm -hmm. the, uh, the Plex thing has been working flawlessly um, for the last few days. It's very interesting. I All right, I'm back. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, what's, your, what's, your, uh, what's your Plex? I mean, it was messing up and, and, and the freezing said that I had to reboot and all that. Gal was looking at it then. One of the times that it was frozen, I went to run that script that uh, Gal wrote for me, and I noticed in the uh, internet settings that it was connected at 100 megabits on the local network instead of a gig. And I said, What's going on? So I went to the switch. Sure enough, it was showing just. 100. So I noticed that it was a Cat5 cable. I said, well, maybe the cable. So I ran a new cable, a Cat6 cable. And uh, ever since it's Cat been. Cat skills? I don't know. Huh? Cat skills? Cat skill. <laughs> anyway, Nick, so you were you were uh, talking about DuckDuckGo. Yeah, before I got a war, I got a disturbed here by the Cape Fear River cresting in Columbus County. Um, so DuckDuckGo has been, I wouldn't call it a prominent search engine, but it has been gaining traction and gaining support over the past, let's call it five or six years. And the whole idea with DuckDuckGo is they are very much privacy oriented. Their big sing, their big selling point, their big um, whatever, is that they are not taking your data. They're not selling your data. That's, that, that's Google's business, biz, biggest business model. It's also Microsoft's business, biggest business model with Bing is selling your search data to companies for advertising. It's very lucrative. I mean, they make a lot of money doing it. It's a free service, so you get what you get. Mm -hmm. DuckDuckGo has, over the past couple of years, really started to gain a lot of support. Um, not only because of their privacy, but because of the censorship that we've seen on a lot of other search engines where searches is de search is deranked and delisted. And, and you've seen, you, can, you can see how the algorithm works on certain search engines. And mm -hmm. DuckDuckGo has been very much the free speech kind of open search engine. And they've gained a whole hell of a lot of support. I've even used it. Um, but this past week, they have decided that they are going to start down ranking websites that are associated with quote, quote Russian disinformation. Mm -hmm. And it brings forward an interesting question and an interesting point about if you want to stay neutral and out of the idea of, you know, the whole thing with Google and, and, and Microsoft and, and Facebook and anything with search is, just stay out of it. Just let the algorithm do what the algorithm does. Keep it unfair or keep it unbiased. Keep it fair and just leave it alone. No, hold on. Hold on. The algorithm is always biased. Of course. Yes. And, there, and there's, there, you're right. By default, there's no such thing as an algorithm without bias. So you tweak, so you tweak the bias of the algorithm. That's always been the case, right? It's, uh, there isn't a perfect algorithm. No. If there was, right, we wouldn't need a search engine. There, we would just, anybody would use an algorithm of their own and you'll just get an index that you search through and that's it. But Correct. there isn't such a case. So we choose our algorithms by choosing the, the service we use, right? Correct. 
and um, and in the case of DuckDuckGo, their algorithm seemed to be very limited in the cert, in the sense of what they were delisting or what they what they were deranking or what they decided to put above others. Well, it sounds that, that up until now they just didn't didn't do anything that affected politics in any way. And this correct. is probably the first time they're doing some politics. All but right. So again, wait, now there was a the, war going on. Now, so it's always political. Listen to this now. Yeah. This is an article from yesterday. DuckDuckGo has little control over its search results because they are provided by Microsoft Bing. I don't know how true that is. Which announced that it would follow the European Union order to restrict access to the Russian state news agencies, RT and Sputnik. But the criticism from the far right was directed at DuckDuckGo. The conservative website Braybrath, Braybarth said DuckDuckGo was adopting the censorship policies of big tech and social media channels devoted to conspiracy theories. User vowed to switch to alternatives like the Russian search engine Yandex. Uh, never mind this, but this article says that DuckDuckGo gets its search results from Bing, from Microsoft. Well, it gets it gets it. It's get it gets its indexing from from Bing. That is true. Bing is doing their indexing. They they still decide how they do their search. So it brings forward okay. the the point. And I don't necessarily have a, a a stance on it either way. And obviously, I'm not here to promote Russian disinformation. Right. That's not the intention. But when you build a search engine and you build it around the idea that they that you're not going to de rank and the, the big problem that at least I have with social media right now, social media, tech, everything is somebody else is deciding what information I should see instead of me right. deciding what information I, should, I, I want to see. If I want to go to a website and read that Russia still, by the way, Russia still today stands by the fact that they are not invading Ukraine. They're saying that they're doing this to protect themselves and to demilitarize the country, which is the biggest crock of shit in the world. Everybody knows that that's the case. Nobody believes that. But it, but it brings forward the question when you build a platform and build it under the idea that you're not going to do these things, and then you do them, you lose the trust of your audience. And mm -hmm. I disagree with your story a little bit that this is all right wing people that are all pissed off about oh, it. That, I'm not pissed yeah. off about well, it. Well, that's from but it just it, 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 it brings forward an interesting question. How, if you want to be the truly the un, quote unquote unbiased search engine, yes, of course, bias always exists. But if you want to be the unbiased search engine, is this, should you do this? My thought is, okay. is no. But I have a question. Okay. Sure. You're running a machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that machine works in a certain way. And not only that, it's exposed to the world and it's affected by the world. A weather machine, a weather prediction machine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now somebody figured out <laughs> how to game your machine to change its predictions, but they are not showing the truth. They're not showing the facts. They are, the facts are skewed. So what do you do? Do you, do you act as a, do you create counter to those specific actions that you can identify that are skewing the results, right? Or do you say, oh, I can't do anything. This is what, this is, this is the crap that's coming in through it. And those are the sensors and that's the way it's going to work, right? Because this is the exact situation you're talking. The, the, the discussion about Russian disinformation is an organized control operation right not only that it's it's basically warfare right just on the data on the cyber side and now everybody needs to decide do they react or do they just play dead what do you yeah, do it, uh, and uh, from from my vantage point if you are duck duck go and you have built up the repute again this is their reputation this is not a um, this is not, I don't think this is a projection of what they've always wanted to be. They've been very clear with what they've wanted to be. They've wanted to be the 
anti-Google, anti-Bing. The search engine where you search something, some sort of right. algorithm generates results, they don't, and they don't, have, they don't delist sites based on anything. That, is their, that has been their plat- platform and their policy, and they've changed that. And I think that's what's the... That's what the. That's why people Come are so. On, there's kind a of, war going on. I, I, it's got nothing to do with the war going on. It's got to do with that, the. Po- I think it has 100 percent to do with it. I, see, I don't though. I think it's got to do with the policy and the precedent that you set. Gal, you set up. You you own a business and and you and set you the precedent. Your policy when things change. Come on. Uh, okay. Okay, but if you build your business on the uh, Gal, you build your business on the idea that food is everything is five dollars. You build the policy. You built your dollar store. You build the policy that everything in your store is a dollar. And then you go in there and things are ten dollars. People are gonna go, what the hell are you doing? You own it's a dollar store. Why are you doing this? You've you've set the precedent. And I think that's why there's a little bit of there's some pushback because they have set the precedent that this is the way that they want to be. They don't want to get into the game of delisting okay, or me, picking sides. Okay. L- let me ask you this. Can you search for child pornography on Dr. Go? Uh, they do not allow uh, illegal things are different. And that's always been right. the case. That's always been the case. That's the case with all. That's the case with all social media. But Gab and everybody talking, else. So, look, if you if you're it's got to do with legality. But you are also right by claiming you're not picking and choosing. You are picking and choosing. So you are just you 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 are deciding to put the the reason for the change in policy here right you're deciding to push it to a very low place in the priority list and say no 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 the, the, the what you promised me was more important right than that but when you're looking at who you're serving right the way i see it is this is the, the, this is one conscientious uh um uh, choice that they need to make that is co- nobody had to deal with in in the last 40 years right so now there is this huge power that is raging war on a country which might be a first in a series right we don't, we, we don't even know where this is going and how long this is going to uh, going to go uh and and we're saying, uh, don't choose sides. People yes. are dying, right? Well, People I, are dying. I, I, so and I and I get and I get that. And I don't choose a side. I, I see, but that's the thing is, I don't think they do, and I think that's what the frustrating part is. It's not that they've, and it, believe me, I, I I completely agree that that information is is very skewed. But Alan brings or John brings up an interesting point in chat. The best way to expose fake news is to let people read it. And again, I don't think anybody is going to go to DuckDuckGo and search latest on Russia and Ukraine and read some article from Sputnik or RT where Putin is still claiming that, oh, hey, we're not doing anything. We're not act, we're not killing civilians. Everybody knows that that's bullshit. Nobody, nobody. But the data nobody, isn't nobody. subdued. No, come on. The data isn't subdued. Don't that's the thing right that's 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 what i hate about this type of 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 criticism uh um and and what i mean is yes the uh the tweaking starts there's blocking and there's blocking of 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 a lot of sources and stuff like that but it's usually very technical right remember those algorithms are crappy to start with. They are machines. They do not do things. Uh, they, they are not all, all, uh, all capable. Uh, but if there's, if you need to put a dam in front of the crap that's coming in, right? And you put up a dam. Is anything censored? No, 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 no. That, that's bullshit. They're not actually censoring. They are blocking spam, basically, right? Why, why aren't we enraged about spam blocking? Hey, bring on all the crap. I want to see it. No, I don't want to see it. And I want, if there's a system that can be put in place and there's, there's some capability of blocking it, put as much of that capability on. That's all and I'm I, saying. And, and, and I think that's, that's, that's where, and again, I, I don't have a problem with them doing this. And I want to be clear on that. 
I think the problem is when you set a precedent that you're not going to do things like that, which is exactly what DuckDuckGo has done. And I get it. As you said, this is something that hasn't happened in 40 years. Totally agree. This is a very abnormal situation. Totally understand. Totally understand. And they've got, it's their business. They have the right to do whatever the hell they want. But when you have set a precedent and now you are changing it, it opens up the door for, and, and I, I, I don't know if, I don't necessarily want to go into this conversation, but it opens the door to, okay, so what's next? That's always the problem is when these things it's start. It's their prerogative. It's their business. But, but, and it doesn't and, matter. And, but from, and it doesn't matter. But from my vantage point, I have seen too often over the last four, four or five years with censorship, it starts with something that m- seems relatively unambiguous. And then it transitions into something else. And people have, might have a little culture, it might have a little shock to that. I think. I think and that that's where my uh, frustration is. And I think that's where the audience's frustration is because they have DuckDuckGo themselves have set the precedent that this is not what they want it to be. And they are being that. That's that's why I think the problem exists. If Google did this, I wouldn't care. If Bing did this, I wouldn't care. And honestly, I don't care that DuckDuckGo did it either. But Google and Bing do not set a precedent that they are this platform that they do not necessarily quote unquote curate content and it appears that DuckDuckGo is now trying to quote unquote curate some content which is exactly what they said they weren't doing and that's the frustrating part i think for people well i mean that's where we see things different i don't see that it's curating not not this not this situation not this exception and you're seeing this as exception as breaking the dam and opening it and Mm i i actually I think I'm, what I'm seeing is actually it's closing the dam and making sure it stays firm. So I think, I think it's actually just a, a, a step where uh, they are enforcing right, their um, reliability. And if they keep on tweaking more and more realms, right? That is when we will have that discussion again and, and our decision will be, okay, let's, let's stop using them or not. But in this particular case, I say it's too early to, uh, to, to be scared about it. That, that's what I'm saying. Mm. It's, uh, it seems like a step in the right direction, right? It is a ballsy step because They've set policies before where they said they don't, they're not interested in doing it. And yet here they are agile enough. They're making a change close enough to the event that happens, right? They are reacting in a certain way because they, my guess is on the technical side, they are seeing, right, a shift, uh, 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 an artificial shift of, of that happening. And they don't want to be a part of that. And I see that as a good thing. Now, if they would have, if for some way, if, if in some uh, way, right, they would have come and said, or somebody from within would come and say, hey, we started tracking uh, people from the Ukraine or from Russia, right? Then I would have a problem with that because that's targeting the end users. That's targeting uh, um that is basically breaking because of warfare, not standing uh, firm, right? And that's, that's the difference in, in this point of view that we have right now. As I'm saying, you are too quick to jump the, the gun on this, right? And say, uh, heresy, right? Uh, and I'm saying, no, 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 this is, this is them being agile, being, being reactive and um, uh, responsible quickly because my guess is that most large companies and i don't think dr go is in any way huge right that i mean they're growing uh and the, they're the massive nice they've got about, like they've got like 250 employees i was reading about that they're a huge company which i was really I mean, surprised by yeah yeah and and I, I mean that's the what i was about to say they they were able to show to the world you can still be on the internet, you can still provide a free service, and you can still do that with respecting your user's privacy, right? And gaining yeah. their trust and not abusing it and still be successful. 
are they as successful as Google? Probably not. But then again, oh, if you're okay with, uh, with getting a thousand bucks a minute, right? Then why push for the million if you don't need to? So uh, not every dollar needs to be squeezed to the end, right? It's like, uh, and that's what they show, that you don't need to be too greedy. You can do it without it. And, and I think they are still proving that point. Yeah. So that's and, why but, I'm saying, um, I, I mean, I understand where you're coming. It's not, it's not that I'm, uh, no, 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 I'm not in that state. <laughs> but it's, I think it's just too early to judge them, right? And it's fair. It should be discussed. And the discussion is good. I agree. But I, it's, I, it's definitely, at this point, I think there, there can be a judgment and saying, yes, this, this is okay of them, right? I, I'm wholeheartedly in approval of what they do, but they definitely need to keep looking and keep making sure that this doesn't become a habit. So we are yeah. in agreement. This happened. And from my vantage Should point, happen? I probably I'm, yes, but not, not and, and, willy-nilly in, in the future. And from my vantage point, I think, because you mentioned that you know, we could have this conversation when it if it devolves further. And I agree with that. And I think myself and many others are, t- are a little hypersensitive to this because unfortunately over the past few years, we've seen things that on face value seem pretty unambiguous that then are used and justified to push things further and further. There's a little bit of PTSD with it. Absolutely. There's this, yeah. this, there's this notion that, oh, it starts with this. And then the next thing you know, it's, it's this, that, well, and the other. And that, it's more that, than that. that I, think, I mean, we live we live in a country where the government is doing it uh, a lot. So yeah, right. So I they, think there's a lot of one PTSD. thing, and then you discover something else. I I I agree. I yeah. agree. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how this uh, how this goes for how this uh, how this goes forward with uh, with them. Okay, so I have a question about this. You started oh. talking about Dr. Go, and you said I had a technical problem, and Gal helped me with it this week. Yeah, we can move on to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so Friday, you know, just living my life, being Nick. Um, I'm watching a, a TV stone. By the way, if you haven't watched Yellowstone, phenomenal television program. Um, yeah, I heard about it. Very, very good. Um, so I've been watching Yellowstone with my girlfriend. And um, she came over Friday afternoon when she got off work. Um, and we were going to watch a couple episodes of Yellowstone. So get sit on the couch, I open up a turn a, a turn on the Roku and the Plex server says um unable to connect try again. And it's happened before, so I first thing I did was restarted the Roku. It only takes a minute and same result. Now I did check and I could reach other people. I could reach a Gaul server, so I knew there wasn't an issue with a Plex API or a Plex cloud or something like that. So came in here and logged in SSH into the server and looked at the status of Plex and it was, uh, it was failed. I said, okay, this is a simple problem of, you know, pseudo service restart. Same thing failed. Okay. Rebooted the OS. Same thing failed. And at this point I am irate. <laughs> Because I had just used the Plex server the day before, um, and it wasn't working. Fortunately, Brian had the show available on his Plex server, so I was able to watch it on his and problem solve. So yesterday morning, I wake up, and I'm playing around with it. I'm looking at, I'm reading some things online. I can't get logs for Plex to load. And I finally just, I finally sent a message to Gal and said, I, I don't know what the hell's going on here. Plex keeps failing to start. I can't find any logs. I can't find any information that's telling me why it's failing to start. And uh, I guess at that point, I'll uh, ask Gal to take it from there. Um, what did we do? Logged into your machine. I'm, I'm trying to remember how we figured out what was going on. But trying to restart the service failed. Uh, Oh, and so I just wanted to install some uh, some basic tools that I use because we there was some uh, file editing that I wanted to do and stuff like that. So just ran an update uh, first 
and saw that there's a lot of package that a lot of packages that haven't been updated. Uh, also, the reason I wanted to update Nick as quickly as possible was a, a, a vulnerability that came up on Linux uh, this week. We'll talk about it later. Uh, and and we saw while we're trying to update, uh, Nick noticed the, no, the the message says uh, not enough disk space. <laughs> and that's when we discovered that uh, Plex didn't have enough disk space. Uh, not only Plex, like the entire system, it was zero bytes free. Uh, and uh, that was easy to fix. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Plex wouldn't start because the disk was full. Um, of the DVR schedule I had set to automatically purge. Uh, I record the six o'clock news every night so that if there's something newsworthy, I can pull the audio for it. And um, it had had pretty much all of 2021's six o'clock newscasts wow. recorded for, and it was about 400 gigs, I think, 300 gigs of, of yeah, recordings like from, from that. And the disc was full and it caused Plex not to start. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm so not, that, uh, we're sorry, we deleted everything. <laughs> yeah, deleted all of 2021. You, can't, no you can't get it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, and I and I also deleted all but the last like six newscasts for 2022, and then reset the schedule to automatically delete stuff. But let me ask you this because I thought this was an interesting question. If and I don't, I've never had this happen with Windows. If my Windows disk was full, like full, full and I restarted mm -hmm. the computer, wouldn't Windows do some sort of cleanup or something when it started to try and purge temp I or something to try and clean up no, space? So the it, temp folder itself is cleared on boot. Yes. So that happens in, 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 um, in Linux as well. But you didn't have anything. Uh, like there was no, nothing. Everything I, was already gone. I can it tell you about cool. Windows. Windows will start. Oh, yeah. it, and the, the, let me let me be but clear. The it, server started. No, no, no. I mean, you're asking if what happened if the disk is full. I I know it firsthand. It will start, but it will be so excruciatingly slow that you would think that it's frozen. It will. It, it, you won't be able to use it. I don't know how they do it. They must be. Taking some stuff, they look, while they are trying to do things, they are deleting stuff that they say, oh, we don't need this, so let's take it. Hey, but that's not enough, so we need to take this out. But it will, I, I don't know, how, how far did the Plex server go? It wouldn't, it, the Plex server wouldn't no, start, wouldn't. but the, the OS started fine. Yeah. And I was just wondering and if, well, for, there was a couple of things. and and. This is again from a noob standpoint. I'm surprised when I logged in via SSH, there wasn't a warning to tell me that the boot drive was full. Uh, I was a little surprised. You didn't set it up. You can set I was it surprised up. that wasn't a default feature. And that seems like something that in Ubuntu should be default via SSH. If you log in, I no. mean, it tells you that you've got packages up to date and everything else. Why not? If you, if you would have booted the graphical user interface, you would get it, but not, yeah. not, the, not the command Inter line. Interesting. Yeah. So, it was a it was a interesting experience. I'm glad it was as easy to solve. I'm um, pissed off that I didn't think about doing a uh, a disk check. I just I didn't even I didn't even think because I hadn't down. What the odd thing is, I hadn't downloaded anything new since I'd last watched anything on Plex. So the disk must right, have but been you're just recording every every night. So exactly. Yeah. So the last two newscasts or whatever that had recorded since or the one newscast that had recorded since must have filled up the disk. So if I had just downloaded something, I would have been like, oh, let me check the space. But I, so it must have been at one percent free or less than one percent yeah. free before so that even. Finished. One thing that we can do that you can do rather easily is you can set up some uh, monitoring service that will send you an alert via, let's say, Discord, a, 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 a service that you use, right, that you have on your phone, Discord, Telegram, uh, uh, I think even home WhatsApp assistant. And Signal. Yeah, Home Assistant as well. And you can, you can hook it up to Home Assistant and it can alert you when the disk is low. So it, everything is possible. And it, with Linux, is is very easy. In, with mm -hmm. Windows as well, there's, uh, there's services that you can put on Windows and they can report back to Home Assistant as well. 
So, I don't want to get too far into the weeds, but if I wanted to set up, because I already have Home Assistant set up for alerting, how would I set yeah. up? What would I do to get? So Home Assistant's running on one container. Yeah, not a problem. And Ubuntu's on the other. What would I use to do something like that? So there's, there's a couple of things. With, with, uh, you can set up a, uh, like a Docker container or, uh, or a service that runs periodically on your uh, on your Plex machine and just sends a webhook with information about the disk space, right? Okay. Or something that alerts when the disk space is low, right? The, yeah. uh, the possibilities are endless and the okay. setup is usually just a single unit file somewhere or a Docker container that you hook up to the, the disk to monitor it. It's it's rather easy. Okay. Uh, we can look at options after the show. Uh, okay. Gal, so, so yeah, that was my uh, that was my little my little problem. Gal, there's a question from Alan about Plex in the chat. Did you see it? Uh, no, I'll take a look. Sorry. So so is, it, is there a user interface for Plex that I could use so I don't have to use Chrome with it? Yeah, Plex has a Windows app. Well, I I don't know if, but I'm it's essentially the browser the app. Think. No, there's a Windows app uh, from the store, from the Windows store. And I assume uh, it's just running an Edge browser and loading it up that way. I don't think it's an actual. No, no, it's different no? because it's like the mobile. Um, it's very similar to the mobile app in, in ways oh, okay. that it can sync downloaded, the, the, uh, downloaded content. Hmm. Yeah. So um, on the computer, the best thing is a browser. If you don't like Chrome, use Firefox, use Edge. Uh, they all work, and it works. It works excellent. I know there is this a version Mac the same. Safari will work. Uh, um, I mean, I guess you hate Safari as much as uh, any person hates Internet Explorer, but uh, any browser will work. Um, if if you really want a client, I don't know about a Mac client, but you can install Kodi and use Kodi. Uh, there's a Kodi plugin uh, for Plex. I think it's official as far as I recall. It's not like a third party or something. Uh, and that works pretty well. I mean, the best way to use Plex is probably some smart stick uh, connected to a TV. Then it's really convenient and you get the, the large view and all that. Uh, from our experience, Roku is uh, probably the best solution. Uh, if you're okay with Facebook uh, in your life, then uh, the Facebook Portal TV, which is a, it's a webcam for the television, but it basically has uh, their own version of Android running on, the, on it. Uh, that's Today, that is the best implementation of the client that I've uh, worked with. Um, so either an Android solution, uh, Android based solution, if you have, uh, if you have a, an Apple TV, they have an application, uh, you mentioned using Mac, so maybe you're, you're hooked up to the Mac, uh, ecosystem. Um, well, I get that. I haven't experienced that a long time in uh, in the Windows environment, but uh, if that's what you're experiencing, that what I can suggest is uh, maybe download a specific browser just for that, right? That's something I've 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 done in the past when I had a, a web app that I I didn't want it to be tangled with other web apps, uh, so I just used a different browser completely. And I mean, there's there the like there's 10 different Chrome based solutions, right? So you're not getting a completely different experience and you wouldn't need anything special on that. So maybe instead of, um, um, instead of using on the, on the browser, you're running everything with all of your extensions and all of that, you can run it on just a, on a parallel, uh, browser, but from, you from could that, also create a new profile in Chrome, a local profile just for Plex, and that would also do that. Yeah, that's, that's true. But I think from what Alan's, so Alan wrote the following uh, uh, comment, browser gets clogged with crap, uh, but, but I end up uh, 
throwing out the baby with the bathwater when trying to clean up things. And I think with Chrome, uh, even if I'm sure with Chrome, even if you run a different profile, when you go to the Chrome exit Chrome, it kills all the profile. So it's the, pretty much the same thing because the way Chrome works, Chrome is inherently a multi-process um, uh, beast. And it's not only every tab that is a separate process, every extension is a separate process as well. And everything is tied to the master process. So even if you run multiple uh, profiles, they're still around that master process. So you're still running in the same world. Yes, you have separate sessions, but you're still running in a separate world. Now, to be fair, most of the issues you experience in, in these situations, they have to do with RAM. Browsers are RAM hungry in a, in a way that uh, we never thought. I mean, I wouldn't recommend running any OS today. It doesn't matter what type of workload you do with just eight gigabytes. It's not enough, right? The, the usual person uh, on a computer is so used to opening so many tabs now, and some of those tabs are media, some of those tabs are um, um, social media, which are very uh, RAM hungry. And the reason they're RAM hungry is because when you're scrolling stuff, right, the, there's a lot of stuff that's still in memory that even though it was already released by the view and stuff, uh, Memory management is, is hell. So either a separate browser, which puts another bit of strain on your RAM, right? Or just get more RAM. <laughs> this, this can uh, be a solution as well. Um, different cost and different uh, type of um, investment, but yeah. So another browser is a, is a very good solution. Um, Kodi is another uh, pretty good solution. And uh, just just use something dedicated instead of your PC to watch uh, video content from Plex. But I understand the inconvenience in that as well. But yeah. All right. Yep. Nick, you ready to do your specials? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. All right, let's do the specials. Here we go. So, um, found this uh, funny meme. Um, it's a it's a story I've been working on for quite some time. It's called the printer that simply worked. And if you keep scrolling down, you'll see that it is also other fairy tales also uh, <laughs> in conjunction with that, because as we know, uh, printers very rarely just simply work. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, kick off. I didn't do the normal specials in the way that Spence does going to individual uh, stores. And by the way, I hyperlinked everything in this PDF. So uh, we'll start off with this uh, monitor on Amazon. AOC, not a Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, but <laughs> AOC, the monitor brand. I've got two uh, 1440p curved AOC panels here, and I've had them for a couple of years, and I've been very happy with them. This is a large, this is a 32-inch uh, 2K 2560 by 1440 AOC monitor with a 75 hertz refresh rate. So if you're trying to do gaming, probably not what you'd want you get 120 hertz but if you're doing uh maybe big excel spreadsheets and stuff like that and you need a lot of screen real estate it's a really good price for a monitor like this uh it's got uh two display port inputs so it supports g-sync uh hdmi 1.4 and display port 1.2 um so a pretty good monitor 31 and a half inch viewable widescreen um it's a va panel so be advised of that normally 239.99 it's a uh, hundred, or rather, it's one hundred ninety nine dollars. You say forty bucks on that, and that's over at uh, Amazon. You can click the link for that. Next is an ASUS VivoBook fifteen. The reason I picked this one up is it's got an OLED screen, which is very interesting. You don't typically see OLEDs. But you don't typically see OLEDs on computers at this price range. So the the computers. Um, 650 for this. Uh, it's at Walmart, even though it says eBay. It's at Walmart, and there's a link for it. It's a 15.6 inch. It's got an i5 
uh, 10th generation i5, 8 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the only thing is it's got a spinning hard drive. So it's still, it's got a terabyte spinning drive. Uh, but for 650, it's not a bad laptop. It's got some power. It's relatively thin and sleek. And um, Asus is, there's a couple of other Asus laptops in here. They, they make some pretty cool laptops. So that's over at, Walmart for six fifty, normally eight ninety nine for that. If you are having some heating issues, maybe on your uh, desktop that can deal with another cooler, I put this in here. This is the quintessential cooler. This is the Cooler Master Hyper Two Twelve. This is the go to. Normally, this is a forty dollar cooler. It could be upwards of sixty dollars. Uh, but Cooler Master's running a $19 or $20 mail-in rebate for it. So the link to that is to the Sweet Deals, uh, uh, rather the uh, Slick Deals article for it. So you buy it for 40 bucks. that's the price. And there's a rebate if you buy it by the end of this month that you can get a $20 rebate back from Cooler Master. And I've done a Cooler Master rebate before, and it all seemed to work out uh, fine and dandy. So you could check out the uh, hyper, the uh, Cooler Master Hyper Two Twelve for uh, to cool off your uh, your gaming computer, or your desktop, over at uh, Amazon. Moving on to televisions, as you see on Walmart's graphic here, upgrade season. I was blown away with how cheap this television. Is. This is a sixty-inch Samsung four K. I'm not the biggest fan of Samsung televisions, but if you're looking for a relatively cheap 60 inch 60 inch tv here's a 4k crystal uhd 2160p uh panel with hdr support this model this tv is normally 600 dollars. it's on sale for 448 you can buy it online or pick it up in stores um it's obviously a 4k it's got all of the samsung smart tv features and it also supports hdr via um, I believe it's HDMI 2.1 is, I think, what supports that. So a pretty inexpensive price for a large, um, and obviously this is not a knockoff brand television. I mean, you're talking about Samsung, who makes a lot of panels for everybody anyway. So you can check that out at Walmart for 448 Moving on to another computer. This is for our Costco membership, friends. If you don't have a Costco membership, it's worth it just for the price of gas right now. You can check out this Lenovo IdeaPad 3. It's a 15.6 inch touch screen. It's got an 11th gen Core i3, which is, you know, it's cutting edge as it gets. It does run Windows 11 Home S mode by default. You can turn S mode off. It's a simple thing to do, but it is running Windows Home. So if you're looking for Windows Pro, you're either going to have to buy the upgrade or if you're looking for Pro, you're probably not in the marketplace for this anyway. Computers normally four thirty at Costco. You save eighty bucks immediately on it. It's three forty nine, and that runs until April the third. Um, and of course, you have to order it to your local Costco and then pick it up. So it's the Lenovo IdeaPad three. Moving on, we don't really talk about tablets all that often, and obviously the iPad and Apple's iPad is kind of the creme de la creme when it comes to tablets. But Samsung is running a pretty good sale on their Galaxy Tab S7, which is their 11-inch. And these things have come a long way from where they used to be. Um, they've got stylus support. It comes with a stylus. You can get one of those kind of magic keyboard things that you click into it, and it acts very similar to the way an iPad keyboard would work, or even a Windows laptop that is um, a, kind of a three-in-one where you can switch it back and forth between having a tablet mode or a laptop mode. It's on sale. It's normally a $650 tablet. Samsung is running this deal themselves, and you can get them for $499 right now. There are different prices based on the model that you get. You can get them Wi-Fi. You can also get them with LTE service or 5G service from Verizon and different storage spaces. The one that's $499 comes with 128 gigabytes worth of storage space, but you can go to that link on Samsung's website and customize this as, uh, as much as you need. So the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 11-inch tablet on sale for $499. Next, on the, in terms of 
smartwatches, something we don't cover. Well, we do. And typically you're looking at a, an Apple watch or maybe some sort of other smartwatch. If you're a little bit more of a rugged style, maybe you do some uh, biking or things like that, and the Apple Watch just isn't for you. Garmin has their, by the way, terrible model number, the Garmin 010-02173-11, called the Venue or the Venue, is their GPS smartwatch. It It runs Android. It connects with both iPhones and Androids in terms of compatibility so you can get all of your notifications and alerts and things like that connecting through the Garmin app. Normally, $350 for this unit, and it is on sale right now for $174. You're talking about a huge, are you talking about a 50% discount on this thing? Um, So if you need a little bit more of a rugged watch, then an Apple Watch, maybe you do something outdoors and you just the Apple Watch or a, another smart watch isn't rugged enough, this Garmin might fit the bill for you. Um, and of course, because it is Garmin, it's got stuff preloaded, GPS, things like that preloaded onto the device. And um, they do offer you know, Spotify, Amazon Music, things like that directly from the uh, unit itself. So you can check out the Garmin smartwatch there. The Roku Streaming Stick 4K, this is not the 4K Plus, but the regular 4K, it's on sale over at Best Buy. It's normally a $50 device. You can get it on sale right now for $39.99. It's got the controller that's got voice support. It supports 4K. I will let you know, though, it is a stick. So take that for what it is worth. It is not going to be the highest power Roku you can get. Does not have Ethernet. You'll have to use it on Wi-Fi. But it for a spare bedroom, for an office, for maybe a TV in the kitchen, probably not a bad device to use for that. If it's going to be your main Roku device, I'd probably get one of the Roku Ultra 4Ks just because of the speed and the power that those have versus this. But for a second TV or a third TV, Pretty good price for this. And it does support 4K if you have 4K streaming available. So the Roku streaming stick 4K. And and it's almost worth it just for the remote. Yeah, the remote, yeah, the remote, the remote is, uh, it's, it's got the next generation remote, which is uh, the voice support and everything like that. So I know we've talked about the cheaper Roku stick. That's $20. I have a couple of those. This is the next level up. This is a much faster unit, but it is still stick form. So you're, speed of the the processor in it is still limited. And then finally, wrapping us up is over at Staples. They have got a Asus here, another Asus laptop. This one, you'll save 180 bucks on this. It's a 15.6 inch. It's only got four gigs of RAM, which is very limited, but for 269, it's kind of hard to beat. I've got a similar laptop to this. It's not an Asus. It's a Lenovo talked about it a couple months ago. I bought it at Walmart. It was literally $170 and it's got four gigs of RAM as well. Manage your expectations, folks. That's what this is for. If you're looking for a a thin computer to carry around with you that will have good battery life and is good for just web browsing and basic medial tasks, this is a great computer to do it. Again, it comes with a, uh, it's got 128 gigabyte solid state drive, a 10th gen Core i3, and it does run Windows 10, so you'll have to do the upgrade to Windows 11 yourself, and it is available at Staples for $269.99. And that is specials. Wow, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll play around with the format over the next couple of weeks. I pulled a lot of stuff from Slick Deals, um, so if you want to act on these things, I I would do it sooner rather than later. but yeah, kind of an eclectic. I mix like of, I uh, like this things. format. Yeah, it's a lot more relevant than a whole bunch. Yeah. No, no, no dig on Spence. It's just no, a no. lot more relevant than just yeah. a bunch of random computers and printers and stuff. So, yeah, a couple of interesting things that caught my eye. Um, all the links are hyperlinked into the PDF. So go open the PDF and just click on the image, and it'll bring you to the page to buy it. So nice. There you go. Thank you very much. Talking yeah, about. We'll Talking about displays and stuff. Yeah. Um, 
Hannah has a Surface Pro 6. Nice computer. Yeah. The thing is, it has one USB 3 and one USB C. That's it. A USB A and a USB C. I mean, yeah, a USB A and a U and one USB C. Okay. So she won. She she was running to. And by the way, you keep hold of that Mac that you got because they no longer sell these things or make them or anything. And there's the a Mac story that later. I have. Yeah, the Mac that you got. <laughs> okay. Why you don't have it anymore? No, it's right behind. Okay. You. You can see yeah, it. I don't. Or, or, Oh yeah, right yeah, right. yeah. Anyway, remember there were. I also had a twenty-seven inch monitor, just the monitor. Yeah, and she was using it, connecting it to a an adapter from USB C to uh, Thunderbolt, mm -hmm. and it's working okay, but it's it's kind of fuzzy, and it's an older monitor. So I had a newer monitor here, and I said, "Okay, honey, here." Take this and try it. So she tried it, and the tops that it gets to is sixteen hundred by nine hundred, I believe. It's sixteen hundred. Really? It doesn't do now. This is going from USB C to HDMI adapter. You have to have an adapter because the the monitor does not have a USB C connection. No, but what's the what's the resolution of the monitor? Uh, it's nineteen eighty by. So 1080. it's a 1080p monitor. It's supposed to be. Yeah, that's what I don't understand if it is the adapter. Now, I brought the, I said, she said it, it does, it, it does less than what the Mac one does. So I said, bring it back. Let me check. So I got it with the adapter, connected it to a laptop here, the USB-C. It won't even display. <laughs> I went and I got, so then I said, okay, it may be, I mean, we got the Amazon choice then 90 some dollar adapter. So I said, maybe it's an adapter. So oh, I, yeah, found, I found another one that actually had uh, Ethernet on it and two USB 3s. It's a and docking station on USB-C. Yeah. Sort of they like, yeah. but USB-C docking station, yeah. Yeah. It was not, like, not sort of. it was they are a dollars. Because you hook power through it. Um, no, it doesn't have power. It goes to the USB-C, right? It, that, yeah. So it, you should have power uh, well, pass it, through as well. It doesn't display on the monitor either. Nothing. Not it's, a thing. I mean, I tried different resolutions, different nothing. It, it it's now if I connect, how did I get it to? Oh yeah, if I connect the that laptop that I have via VGA to the monitors VGA works perfectly, but not through USB C. So I don't know. I mean that that is an i three uh, laptop. It's not. A recent one it's probably a couple of years old few years old i don't know if it's the usb c port that's not doing what it's supposed to do um but i then i started reading and reading and those two sticks uh, i sticks two adapters say that they do 4k at 30 megahertz now i've seen some of those adapters that do 4K at 60 and 4K at 120, but I figured, you know, for text stuff, you probably don't need it. Am I correct? It's correct. I mean, it's okay. Yeah. It's not, it's not like 60 would be better, but if it works, it works. I, there are, uh, yeah, I don't know. I use on 30, it's okay. I don't know why it's not doing it. Um, I, I need to to get another monitor. I mean, um, another. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure that the Surface USB C can support that? It supports it on the big 
Mac monitor. She uses it with a big. No, there's no. no. But with an that, adapter. That's not, that's not. That's yeah. So there are different types of adapters. So when it comes to USB C, there is a standard for USB C to be a docking station. Okay. okay. No drivers are required. This is hardware support. That uh, it, adapter from USB C to Thunderbolt. That is something that is installing a driver on Windows, right? And it's passing the image through that driver to the Thunderbolt. Chip. Okay, I. So it's not a hardware solution. It is a, It's a. It's a mixed solution. Okay. So that's the. That's, that's neither, the thing. It's a. Okay. Neither one of these adapters that I have at hand has any kind of software, and they said does not require a driver. On Windows well, now on Windows. Eight, ten, and no, eight and yeah, 10. that just means that the driver is probably available on Windows eight uh, going hmm. forward. Um, I'm telling anyway. you that it's likely that this is all of these are using a new standard of USB C, a newer standard of USB C, which acts as a as a um, a docking station and. Most brands now are switching their docking station technology to that, to the USB-C. So it's, it's funny because you remember how uh, Lenovo docking station used to look. There was that um, ugly plug at the, the bottom. On the back, yeah. Would, right? Yeah. So now, uh, to keep that shape, right, they, they still have something shaped very, very similar. And the only thing it does is it have hooks there to to catch it because around that plug there were hooks, right? But you need to, you like there's a side switch that just pushes a USB C to the side at the at the right location after the hooks are in. So that's the new version. The the newest version are just it's a small box with a USB C that you just hook up and that's it. So. USB C is the interface, but it also there's a lot of standards in it. Uh, I just don't, I never remember the numbering. Uh, there's some uh, website I go, I, I don't even remember yeah. right now. So the moment I'll remember, I'll send the link. But it's like you need to remember that there are a lot of different standards going around it, and you need to make sure. And you mentioned a Surface 6, right? Yeah. So that's not a very new model. No, it's not. And so it's about uh, three years. That, so. That's why I'm thinking maybe, maybe, maybe that USB C isn't supporting that protocol. Okay. So, I mean, it's not going to support it even with a driver that maybe somebody it's added. Not, it's yeah, got it's nothing not to do with that. Okay. No, if you do okay. want something that will work, then look for something that comes you know with a cd or something something that even the the driver will pro most probably be online and, and you can install it but it will be some sort of hybrid solution uh, look for something that works with usb 2 as well something like that right and that that's that way you know that it's not relying on the usb c protocol or uh Ah, that's a good okay. idea. I didn't think about it. Yeah. But then, then it's like two adapters. Well, no, well, doesn't it? No, it's the same it, thing. Yeah. The the main difference is it will come with a power adapter. Yeah. Can I make a recommendation? Yes, absolutely. Get the micro get the Microsoft Surface docking station. You'll probably spend a little bit on it, but get it. But if, like Gal is saying, that that USB C does not support. If, if you get a Microsoft Surface docking station that is compatible with that device, it will support right. everything. That's what, yeah. Hmm. Well, you said it's the Surface 6, Surface Pro Surface 6. Surface Pro 6. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, these, the, the docking stations are outrageous. How much? Well, the one that Microsoft makes is like $200. Wow. Um, but like, here's a, a, a you're you're gonna have to do a li, you're gonna have to do a little bit of back and forth with some research on it because there they are, oh. as God mentioned, there are different standards and everything. But I, that's the weird thing is also that I was weird, the reason I got it mentions that it's for the 
Surface Pro. Hmm. Is the Surface Pro up to date? Yeah, she keeps it up as far as Windows update. Yeah. Is it running Windows 11 or Windows 10? Um, I, I don't know. I didn't ask her, but I think, no, she's running Windows 10 still. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Gal, mm -hmm. I just found, uh, I was on Costco's website. They sell the first alert Z Wave smoking carbon monoxide alarms, a three pack for $80. Yeah. Is that a good deal? That's, yeah, that's not bad because they usually cost above 30. So this way you get what, 25 per? Yeah, 25. Yeah, per yeah that's, that's good. Nick, send me the, the link. Okay, I'll do it. And you you were talking before about the problem that you had with Plex, and mm -hmm. God help you. I had the same situation. I mean, it, I had a problem with Plex, and and Gal finally fixed it. But it was a different situation. Gal, you want to talk about it? But the um, the, I mean, the app app. What app? Do you remember? Oh, we had, with Roku. Yeah. 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 Uh so I don't remember how I, okay, I was I was not able to play live TV. Live TV huh. disappeared from the menu. I could go on the HD home run and use it. I could go I believe I could go yeah, I could go on the web app on the on plex.tv and it was there but it was i could not see it on the uh tv i rebooted the server i rebooted the everything the tv the the switch eh, nothing helped so it's fine you watch through the hd home run and i told Gal, I said, this is weird. So Gal, after a few hours. First, Gal got annoyed yeah. that Amnon doesn't know how to use his TV. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Welcome, welcome to the club, man. Gal. Jeez. <laughs> no, I mean. It, but it, I was completely wrong. No, Amnon did everything right. That's the thing. Yeah, I mean, it's you like, know, uh, you, you think about on, it. Amnon. Uh, you're not but, doing it right. And, uh, the, and no, Amnon was doing everything perfectly it's just it was just a weird one it but was weird the way i solved it was uh was a simple uh, google search yeah <laughs> i mean i wouldn't even think about searching for Why? an app problem and it turned out that the Any latest problem come on man you're not the only person using this thing yeah any problem go and check well you got a rattling would, on but, the but you, you see, outside and you're not sure what it is? Google it. Well, Find it. Yeah, right? I know. But I mean, <laughs> you think that the person who updated the app or the Roku would have checked it? Because you say, yeah, I'm not the only one. I mean, this is nah. one. And obviously, First they of all, did. they checked it. It doesn't happen to everyone, but it happens to a bunch of people. And you're not the only one that it'll, ha yeah. it'll happen to. If you're the only one that, if you're the first one reporting about it, that's something completely different. And yeah. I'm guessing even the person who reported on it on, uh, on Roku, right? Even he wasn't the first one to report on it, but it's the one that we found. So it's, I mean, it, it happens. Yeah. Uh, the, I had, the, I had uh, to remove. And Nick, you, you watching live TV on your Roku, right? Yeah. You did not have any problem. No, not, no, not that I'm aware of. Well, I don't want now. I will week. say this: I don't watch it as often as you do. It doesn't I'm matter. Trying, I don't, well, it but, well, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm trying to think if I've watched live TV in the past couple of weeks. I watch a lot of DV. I, I, I feel like I have, but I can't tell you that I have for sure. Well, even the the the, the news. It seems like if there is no, if the app does not have the live TV in it, it will not be able to record anything. 
because it says, hey, I cannot record anything from well, that the, channel. The app is, but let's be clear, the Roku app is not the one that is recording things. It's the server that is recording. I understand, but the server you can't record new things, but you everything's recorded. Live, t you're telling me live TV was gone on the server? Gone, gone from the no, 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 app. No, 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 not from in exactly. App. app in the server are different. Live TV still existed on the server, so it could still probably record things. Because the DVR is not happening on the Roku. You didn't have the access to the live TV interface. That's all. Exactly. Right? So I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. no, I'm not. I think I'm not. Is uh, is is. Uh, thinking because he continued watching because he switched to the uh, HD home run app. That's got nothing control to do with recording from there. Yeah, right. So. So, yeah, I mean, so if you went to the web browser and you went to live TV, you can start a new recording. It's not a problem. So, yeah, we had to I had to uh, remove the app. And reinstall. And it installed the, the new one. And everything came back, but it doesn't say. It used to say live TV and DVR on the in the menu. Now it's saying just live TV. But uh, yeah, that that fixed it. Yeah. So I'll know next time. Let's talk about the Linux patch this week. Yeah, yeah. go so, ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I think. I think the 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 update about this uh, the publication about this that came out uh, either last weekend or just after that. Yeah, seventh of March, so right after the weekend on Monday, um, a publication about. Um, about a bug uh, in the Linux kernel uh, that was found as far back as uh, late April of 2021. Uh, wasn't, it wasn't published then. Uh, it was uh, notified uh, immediately to the kernel maintainers. Um, uh, I, think, I think so it started with an issue for some uh, some uh, programmer, uh, while he was debugging an issue uh, in that the, some data corruption was happening, and that happened uh, April last year, and that got um, eventually that uh, that ended up in kernel space in the Linux, and around February, um, it was discovered that there's a bug that can allow. Any user account logged in to the um, uh, logged into um, um, a Unix a Linux uh, operating system uh, to gain to be able to write to any any root uh, uh, protected file. Now, why is that important? The moment you have the ability to write over a file that you do not own, right? That means you can replace something that can get uh, permissions to run as the roots of the system, as the most privileged user of the system, and that means you gain com full com full control of the system. So I hope I hope I explained it okay uh, in in a in in a meaningful way. So basically, there's a way for unpatched Linux kernels, and right now most of the internet is probably unpatched Linux kernels, uh, any Linux uh, system running there. Uh, uh, there. There are a few versions that were already patched. Uh, so it means that a user, any user that has uh, access to the system can run something, can run a small uh, application and can gain root access to the system, meaning they can do anything. One of these flavors of systems is Android. This Android is susceptible to the same bug. So I'm guessing this, uh, it's called Dirty Pipe. I'm guessing this hack, this is going to be the main hack for a while to gain um, a jailbreak sort of uh, uh, get, get root on Androids. 
Um, it's, I mean, I know Amnon is, uh, I took care of, the, of it uh, on their services uh, the moment he heard about it because that means anybody who can uh, log into a system via SSH, right, uh, might be able to exploit that. Um, so it's, uh, it's a big issue. It's a very big issue. Um, if you really want to read the details about it, you can search for the CVE. Uh, uh, the, the, I think the best place to read about it is about the first, it's from the person who reported it in the first place and he wrote a, um, a blog entry, uh, a man named uh, Max Kellerman and it's at dirtypipe.cm for all.com uh, and it's uh, it's an interesting read it's a bit technical of course uh, uh, but uh, I think even if you're not too technical you can skim through it uh, see the timeline of it evolving and then you can read um, you know articles that are linking to, to here um, there were similar exploits uh, uh, similar CVE issues like these uh, vulnerabilities like these, they were exploited in the past. Uh, previous one was called Dirty Cow. It's a big deal. It's, um, it, it's a real problem uh, when something like this happens because you get um, IT managers all over who, is, who are running Linux systems. Uh, they're, you know, they're, uh, they're running uh, around making sure that everything is patched. Every user that's running a Linux operating system is patched because you don't want anything to be accidentally downloaded and you know, exploit the system. So if you're running Win uh, Linux in anywhere, uh, uh, make sure that uh, you, have, um, you have patched it very recently. Uh, I'm not sure if Ubuntu... 2004 has updated already. I'm checking that, but I, I, I just didn't deal with that machine yet. And I know that the Ubuntu 2104 up until Tuesday was still uh, vulnerable. Uh, so definitely take a look there. I did find a, a nice tool with uh, a very um, um, disturbing name called Trador. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a pun on trait and, tra uh, and betrayal. Uh, and it's on GitHub. And what if you're running a Linux system, you can download Trader to a user account, an unprivileged user account. And it analyzes the system and it lists uh, the CVEs that are possible to run. Uh, and also demonstrates um, the um, it demonstrates the uh, uh, exploit by actually running it, doing a test, and then reverting the system back. Uh, it's L I A M G trade. Uh, that's the user, and the tool is Trader. Uh, if you have a Linux system and you want to play with it and test it. You can definitely take a look at that. You just download their binary from the release and uh, and you uh, give it a go. It's um it's a nice tool. It's a dangerous tool. Be very careful with it. But if you're into exploration, definitely take a look. All right. Yep. Um. Let's see here. Oh uh, yeah, Nick. So I was talking about the big. Apple has finally discontinued the 27-inch iMac. Minutes after Apple's peak performance event wrapped, the last of the Intel iMacs disappeared from its online store. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, they did they're the wear their, their own chips. Yeah, they run their own chip, and now they have the newer one that. They saying is I mean people are saying that it's unbelievable it's double the speed. Mm. Uh, another thing about Apple, um, at its peak performance event, Apple announced the third generation of iPhone SE, featuring the A15 Bionic chip. 
improved battery life, 5G connectivity, new camera system, and more, all starting at $429. It's a 4.7 inch display, and it now offers toughest glass in a smartphone on the front and back. Same Has as anybody the- run uh, Android on it yet? <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> so it's uh it's interesting. Four hundred twenty nine. Now that you know that's ah, yeah you can. They're trying to they're they're the, the they're trying to make it affordable. The price went at, way out of control, and they're trying to rein it back in. Do you have what? Which one do you have? The uh, eleven. Twelve. No, hold on. I got. I've got the thirteen. You have a thirteen already? Yeah, I got. Yeah, I got it a couple weeks ago. I oh, got from, uh, oh yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and uh, th- this is like probably half the price of that thirteen, right? But it's also uh, half less than half the price, yeah. Oh. Yeah, but they do have. I mean, Nick didn't get the the cheapest model, so I mean, the, um, it's always a range. Yeah, well, actually, I think I did. I got the. I just got the baseline thirteen. I didn't get the thirteen Max or the thirteen Pro. Mm-hmm. I think I did get the cheapest thirteen that they sell. Okay. I could be wrong. I have no idea. Um, by the way, I posted a link in the chat to that Costco yeah, I listing saw uh, to, to buy those. So I ordered those. I've never ordered anything online from Costco. I have no idea how long things take to come. Um, so maybe by next week, I will have uh, a couple new smoke alarms to uh, hook up to my Z-Wave hub. Now, uh, these smoke alarms also work independently. They don't need to be. I mean, yeah, the Z Wave is just an yeah. alerting mechanism. Yeah. It's still just a smoke alarm. Right. I mean, well, three three smoke alarms with CO for yes, eighty bucks is CO. cheaper yeah. than buying the regular ones. I think. Well, I just looked. These are currently the first alert Z Waves are selling for thirty nine dollars a piece yeah. on Amazon. Yeah. So they're yeah. you know they're you're getting essentially one for free. One yeah. thing I can tell you is just hooking it up. By default to the system, uh, your batteries are gonna die in less than a couple of months, maybe three months. So okay. make hey. sure after you uh, uh, look at forums and all that, but make sure after you hook it up that you change the frequency it uh, it calls back home uh, to uh, updates uh, um, home assistant. Well, now you do that inside of the Home Assistant Hub, correct? Yes, yes. There should be configurations uh, about the uh, frequency and all that about when when you go to the device setup. Yeah. So I'm looking at my little Zeus. Hey, Spence. Hey, good hey Spence. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I just I literally threw myself out of bed and came down here. I'm still not thinking straight, but. <laughs> Nick, finish, change, finish talking. And finish. Wait, Nick, finish talking about that. So, Gal, I'm inside of my um, Z-Wave JS control panel inside of uh, Home Assistant, and I'm looking at my little water sensor. Um, is that the battery report? I, I don't see anything in here where I set the amount of time that it pings. Well, it really depends on the device, the device you're right? working with. Yeah. yeah, so it needs to expose those endpoints via uh, via JS. Uh, if you go to, which is fine because so this thing go, is still at one hundred percent. So yeah, so you go to uh, the the integration, the Z-Wave integration, right? Uh, the configuration. You go to the list of integrations. You go to the Z-Wave integration to the list of devices. From there, you choose the device. Once you're in the device view, so you get a layout of different uh, values and switches and stuff, that. but you also yeah. have configure device. And once uh, you go yes. to configure device, you get exposed another set of values. 
Okay. Where yeah, you so can tweak is, things. Yeah. So this one must just not have that available as a as an option. And how long do the yeah, batteries it last? It's at, well, still says it's at a hundred percent, and I've had it for a couple months. A couple okay. Months yeah, ago, and that's so. fine. That's that's normal. But I can. And tell I guess you the water sensor is a little bit different than the smoke alarm. Uh, not only that, I think uh, um, there's. I, I really hope that you won't have that issue with this uh, uh, version of uh, because I'm guessing they do, you know, update them from time to time. So uh, when I bought it, it was. Uh, it was early days of Z-Wave. Uh, uh, I, I think this just came out or something like that, or a year before. It wasn't like um, a long time that that was existing. And yeah. uh, Spence, uh, can you wait a second? Spence, can you the... can you mute the mic? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, go ahead. Go and and one of the things that I've uh, um, also noticed back then is when it reported 77 percent battery that's when it started chirping right mm, wow so yeah uh so i still don't know uh whether it's whether your version will do it it's still the best out there so mm -hmm. even with the with the, this um uh, with this issue right uh i, I still recommend it it's just take note it, it, you might need to deal with the battery at least first. I have a fast question before we go to Spence. What kind of does it mention? What kind of batteries they use? Double A. Okay. Oh, these are. Oh, these aren't. Uh, these aren't one use. Really? Uh, no, I'm. I'm no, asking. No, double no, A. Mine. Mine. Uh, at least. What do you mean? Yeah, I what, what, the photo. I in the photo on uh, Costco, you see double A's. Oh, Two okay. Perfect. Yeah, I didn't even look. I just. I just. Yeah. Bought them. Okay. No. And you're gonna need to replace them. Yeah, so, no. yeah. I find it interesting though, because the little C, the little water sensor I have has got one of those C, C thirty two oh five or whatever they are batteries, and and I just checked my Z Wave thing, and it last checked it at just around yeah, one o'clock this morning. Yeah, but remember, the water sensor is completely passive, so the only activity is the Z Wave. Uh, you're right. Uh, you're right. Activity the, report. Yeah. Yeah, and this one is an active sensor that needs to uh, that will react when something happens, but it actively checks for the state, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Not only okay. that, I think you can get report on the CO two uh, quality and all that. So, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, that'll be a good way for me to start with, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. This 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 guy says. This one, I'm just reading on Amazon. This is from 2015, so take it for what it's worth. He says, I installed mine about eight months ago, and the battery life is still at 90%. And then somebody else says, batteries yeah, lasted he, six months. Has he, to what has he connected it to? That's very yeah. important, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Spence. Oh, he's eating. <laughs> Um. Yeah, that. There we go. Hey, let let me know if the background noise gets to be too much. I'm going to take you guys outside. It's about minus fifteen to hell. Jeez. Okay, give me a minute. I'm going to walk outside for a minute. But it's it's been interesting. It's it's during the day. It maybe it goes up into the twenties. Uh, yesterday it's it was about four. 14 during the day. Huh? It's pretty cold here today. The high temperature here today is only like 43 degrees, which is yeah, very hot because it was 70 it, yesterday. Yeah. Pam was in the mountains, came home yesterday, and they had snow up there. Yeah. And it was cold. Very odd. So it's, it's what's unusual here is that the uh, there's so much snow still. They got a lot of extra snow. Normally, it's about 60 inches, and they've had over 90. And the 60 inches for the whole season. The Fairbanks is considered to be an Arctic desert because it only gets a uh, around 17 inches of rain a year. So hmm. it's unusual for it to get this much snow. And then the problem they have here is that when the snow is like this, normally when it starts to melt, it melts gradually. But because there's so much snow and so much ice under the snow, when the, when the melt starts, there's going to be flooding because the it can't drain. 
all the culprits are packed with ice. So they're, they're going to have a problem here. And it's going to be interesting. And driving, we're, we're going to take new drivers out and they're going to drive on snow. That's, you just think about it. I'm going to put you in a 45 foot motor coach and you're going to drive it on snow. You've never driven before. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be fun. <laughs> All right, so Technolo everything is okay. Yeah, yeah. Technology-wise, it's it's fun because we everybody's using now across the industry electronic data logging, meaning you used to use a paper log sheet and you'd log your hours with a little graph and with a pen, you know, with a pen. It was you kept track of your time in fifteen-minute increments. And now with electronic data logging, uh, this is a standard across the industry mandated by the federal government as of uh, last year. Uh, you're, you have a tablet in, in the, uh, any commercial vehicle and they've got elect an interface that goes to the engine so they know how fast you're going, they have all performance information, there's all the stuff that comes in from the vehicle, including your location and your speed. So the, the you have to have a, a log into that system to track your logs and then you have an, a a dashboard that you use to edit your logs. So here I am this week learning how to use this system. And I tried tablet, phone, and computer, and I could not log in. Well, every time I log in, I have to clear the cache on any browser I'm using, or I can't log in. What member doll we talked about? Was it a DNS error last week that caused yeah. this? But but as soon as your sessions are your session will time out. So if you let it sit for more than five minutes without moving the mouse, it times out. You have to go and, <laughs> and now I have a, a routine of sitting there log, ed editing my logs. I have to go and as soon as I, I have to go and clear the cache, I, I'm using Edge browser because it's so easy. That's the only thing I use it for. But here we are, you know, whacked in the face with technology again. Can I make a recommendation? If you're just using Edge for that, you can set Edge to clear cache and cookies when you close out so you don't have to clear it manually. Right. Well, what, what I did was I just have the settings pane open mm -hmm. and i just go it's ready oh i have to do this quick oh gotcha and i can go ahead and it, just restart the session yeah so is this a federal like, government system that you're logging into or a no, proprietary it, system? It's, it's a it's a commercial proprietary system well the data and the way it's handled is 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 all standardized because you mm -hmm. can you can take your tablet and you get pulled over by a police officer or a, or a department of transportation person they can look at your tablet and if they want to look at your logs, you can send it to them. They give you a pin code that automatically sends it. They did go through the 3G conversion. It whacked the industry because all these vehicles are running, all this data telemetry was coming back through 3G. So now they've had to upgrade to 4G. It's been painful. Uh, but the uh, you can, I can actually in my log or in my um, tablet, either send an email to someone which they don't usually use or to send it to a pin code because it goes to some federal server and then that person has access to those logs. So it's very interesting. It's, it's, it's made a lot of um, people unhappy because of the, the way they implemented it. But it's, it's a company that they use is doing a good job supporting us. And uh, it took me a little while to get used to it. I've been using an older version of it for a couple of years. Uh, they, they had like a grandfathered older system for people to use, which was adapted. But the new one is like, you, if you can't plug that interface into the, into the vehicle and gather that data, um, it's very hard. There are ways to be exempt from it. If you drive within a certain radius, but we're not exempt, we have to use it. Interesting. All right. All right, look, I know the show is ending, but I'm going to take a step outside so you can feel how cold it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right by the door. I'm in the, in the Westmark Hotel in downtown Fairbanks. And yesterday, I went for a walk almost five miles, and it was 14 degrees. It was pretty exciting. I was going to ask. Because... All right, so here we go. You guys, you guys ready? Ready to feel this? Are you going to go outside with a shirt? Yeah, outside. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to be out He's not going to freeze to death, am I? It's not negative 300 no. degrees outside. No, but it's, uh, it, you find that 
you, once you're up here for a while and you're dealing with the cold, now I know I'm not going to stay out here. But to step outside, it's cold, but it's not horrible. So it's, it's yesterday the only danger I had. The wind was picking up. And thank goodness I had a, a neck, a neck uh, tube thing that I could pull up over my face because it got cold walking. Yeah, it's, uh, it's about minus 12 mm. now out here. Yeah, things, things work very differently. All right, go cold. back in. I'm going. Uh, no, Kathy got a new probe for like when I cook on the grill to see the temperature that you stick it in the in the meat, and it had you know the temperature and this and that, and then it had a button taste, and I said, really, it can tell you how it tastes. <laughs> and then when you go on it, it was like for well or medium or. The reason Amnon didn't want uh, Spence outside is his uh, computer's 2K now insurance policy doesn't cover somebody no, freezing it doesn't. to death. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're muted, Spence. All right. Okay, guys. It's time. Anything else that anybody wants to add? Quick here. Nope. Uh, no, I, think, I don't think so. All right. So, thanks, Gal. Nick, Spence, thanks for connecting. What time is it, Spence? You guys, does, does Alaska do daylight savings? Yes. So it's six, it's six, uh, it's just coming up on seven o'clock. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, seven twelve. All right. Well, it was fun. It's time to go back to bed. <laughs> Uh, again, thanks, guys. And good morning, Kathy, Hannah, Nabil, Mac, Norm, Katie, and Dana, Dina, Arlette, and Micha, Eleanor, Sarid. Thank you, everybody, for tuning to Computers 2K. Now, we hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from our time together. Remember to practice safe computing, back up your hard drive, and update your virus scanner. We'll be back here next Sunday. At Nine, but you can always reach us at computerstukano.com. Again, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m. Nick is on Wilmington 980 The Wave and 107.9 FM. You can tell your Echo device to play 980 The Wave if you want to listen live. Or you can always go to nickcraig.com and listen to the recording. And Tuesday at 7 p.m., Nick and Brian do the Infection Podcast on Twitch. So you go to twitch.tv slash Infection Podcast. And that's for survival games and gaming news. See you next week. tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.